It's Jamie. Hi, I'm Gemma. From Play to Learn Preschool. Happy Wednesday. We're here this afternoon. We thought we would share some ideas about art. But first, I want to show you. I have a microphone because people are saying I'm too quiet. So we need so to know if Jamie's it's working. Jamie's got me a microphone so that you can hear me properly. Please. I feel very official. She looks like a TV news anchor. I do, I feel, yes. Next thing you know, we'll have a cameraman. Yeah, we need a cameraman. Okay, <laughs> back to art. You need to let us know if you can hear Gemma better. Anybody? Can anybody hear me? All right. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. There's a little delay, so the first few seconds on Facebook Live, we're just talking to ourselves, and then you all Which join is in. the story about lives, talking to ourselves. Oh, goodness. We are going to share some art ideas with you today. We know that preschoolers benefit the most from... Ooh. I need glasses next. Fantastic. She can hear you. Preschoolers benefit the most when they participate in process art. And process art, by definition, is an art um, activity that really focuses on the doing and not the making. So what are they doing? Are they painting? Are they rolling? Are they um, rubbing? Are they crumpling? Are they dripping? Are they whatever they're doing as a process is more important than whatever they're making at the end. And as educators, as early childhood educators, we know that that's what our children need. They need the practice with the skills, the fine motor, they need the ability to express themselves creatively. But the problem that we run into as teachers is... The parents would like something to put on their fridge at home. Something that looks amazing. And sometimes even as teachers we feel um, pressure to make a bulletin board or a display mm -hmm. or... Pinterest has made that worse. I call it the Pinterest plague. And the yeah. Pinterest plague is this problem that we have where we see a cute craft online and we think that would be adorable. It would be perfect for Halloween or whatever. But we forget to think through the actual steps of creating that craft, which a lot of times might just be glue, 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 done. And it's made a process project that looks, I'm sorry, a I, might, I said it backwards. It makes a product product goal, like you know what I mean? Like there's really the goal is just to make this thing that looks exactly like the sample that I've given. And we don't want that. We don't want our students to have to make something that looks like the sample. We want them to be able to engage in the process and to make something that's creatively their own. The way you can tell the difference between process art and product art is a few ways. The first, it doesn't look like we did it. <laughs> Parents don't want to hang their 40 year old teacher's yeah. artwork on their fridge. They don't. We are artistic, but probably you wouldn't want our stuff. And so if the teacher is spending so much time cutting out the pieces, making the model, showing them exactly how to do it, even like fixing the eyes so they're exactly situated right on the head, and then they send it home with the kid, well guess what? That's not the kid's artwork, nope. that is the teacher's artwork. And it would be a little strange, don't you think, for the parents to be displaying the teacher's artwork all over their home. So that's one way you can tell it looks like an adult did it. And then the second way is if all of the products or projects are hanging up, you can't tell them apart. And even the kids might not be able to tell which art project is theirs. And so we want to get away from that and really encourage the creativity. We have a number of different ways that the students participate in art in our classroom. Um, their favorite way might be at the art easel, and we usually have paint there. Sometimes we switch it out with different um, tools, or we'll put out markers or dot markers, or you know, we change it up a little bit. But for the most part, it's paint, and they're free to go there during centers. So I wanted to show you some of the lovely creations that our three-year-olds made. It's pretty. I don't even think she told us what it was. No. Sometimes if they'll tell us what it is, we'll write it. So this is an art That's project. That's the only time we write on their papers. Um, is if they tell us what it is, we will write it down word for word what they said. Don't Look here on Facebook Live by yourself. <laughs> Here's another example. Process um, art at the art easel. a race car. It's a race car. That's what he told us it was. Duh. Um, now this is one of our pre-K students. So this week we have out just black, orange, and white paint, and it's a jack-o'-lantern. Um, but we also, in addition to the art easel, usually have an art project set up for them to do um, at our snack table at our messy area. 
Which one? Do um, you and so what we're going to do is show you some of the process art projects that we have set that we've done in the past, and then the trick that we like to do is we like to take their process art if they let us and make it something that's fridge worthy that the parents would be happy to have at home to display in their fridge or on their child's portfolio or whatever. So here's one example. We like to do painting with different materials. And so one of our favorite things to paint with is a bath sponge. It's like a... This one's a bit painted up. I don't know. It's like a puff bath up. Puff? I don't know. We got them at the dollar store. Yeah. And so they'll, they're just painting, you know, all over the paper. And then rather than send the paper home with the painting all over it, which would be fine, you could do that. We'll ask our students, would it be okay if we cut that into a pumpkin? We always ask them, because sometimes they say no. They don't, they don't want you to do it. But then instead of sending that paper home, we'll send home a pumpkin. <laughs> so it's painted. the same process. You could cut it ahead of time, but I do like to give them the option afterwards and when it's dry, would you like us to change it into a pumpkin? And a lot of times they'll say yes, because they like to watch it. Um, you know, transform, and then sometimes they say no, and we just send the paper home. But yeah. so the process is learning to do those, you know, those movements and just, just exploring colors. That one we had a red and yellow paint, and of course they mixed it up to make orange. And then we just cut it into a shape so that the parents can have something to take home. Okay. Which one would you um, let's this do this. One? Yeah. So then this is what we had. A couple people were asking what was in the background of our video yesterday. This is the process art that we had set up for them yesterday or Monday? Monday? I don't remember. Monday. Um, so this is a black piece of paper. construction paper. We put a few pieces of tape on the back. And it's just in one of these baking trays, disposable baking trays. We got a big pile of them at Costco, but I think they sell them at the dollar store in smaller smaller numbers too. Okay. And then what we did do this. <laughs> okay, I'll, is we I'll have just the a bowl of white paint and it's got some marbles in it. And so then the students take the marble into their tray and just roll it around. It's hard to do on camera. So they're rolling the white paint all around on their paper, just a marble painting. So it's the process of learning how the ball moves and... And um, making sure your body is moving. That's you have true. to move your arm. It's hard. Some kids just go left and right, and then yep. you have to show them you can also go forward and backwards. And, and the marble jumps out, and then you have to chase it around the room, <laughs> which is our favorite thing to do. But it's just a nice process. They enjoy seeing the white paint tracked all over their paper. But then at the end, what you have is a black piece of paper with white paint all over it, which is fine. Um, but we might like to do something like this, where we cut them all into a. It's hard to see it. It is kind of hard to see. It's kind of like a spider web shape. And then we wrote on it, spider web. So it's the process that we've turned into a product that they can take home. I shared this on Instagram, I think. And this was uh, one of our favorite art projects is we covered our table with paper towels. First we covered it with a shower curtain. Don't forget, shower curtain. Always put a shower curtain down. We get them at the dollar store and just cover them, cover the table, and then on top of the shower curtain, we mm -hmm. covered it with just a roll of paper towels or half a roll of paper towels. And we put out cups with colored water. You can use food coloring or liquid water colors or whatever. Or even watered down paint. You mm -hmm. can use whatever. Um, and then we put these little... Um, Eye droppers. Thank you. I'll just start a sentence. <laughs> this is how we do every day. She starts something and I just finish a sentence. Or I just start thinking something and then you try to read my mind. <laughs> Everybody needs a Gemma. I lucked out though. Anyway, it's an eyedropper and so they're practicing a lot. This is actually a really hard skill. Hard. Pinch, put it in the water, suck it up, move it over to the paper towel and then let go. Let go. That's, or squeeze it out without letting go. Um, so this is practicing that tripod grasp because there's no way to, you know I mean? It doesn't work if you use your full, full fist. So they're practicing this really important fine motor motion, and they're just dripping paint. Show them the final product. I mess that up every time. Sure. I'm gonna be Betsy Banner, too. not Jamie. I should just sit here and let Gemma take it over. <laughs> okay, so we have paper towels on the table that Jamie has expertly dripped. Actually, these are the kids. I didn't <laughs> drip. You didn't. Do no, it? I, no. no, I don't think so. I, no, it was. The kids. I demonstrated it, but so that, so we have like. I don't know how many of these paper towels. I'll show you. Approximately. A, a, a small number that we've... 200 paper towels that are all drip painted. And yeah. so we do let everybody take one paper towel home. And I'm sure the parents are like, thanks for the painted paper towel. <laughs> Y'all are You're great. welcome. Wow, you guys are fabulous. Look at, look at how cool this one looks. They look really cool, but I mean, what are the parents going to do with a painted paper towel, really? <laughs> 
sorry, parents. Put it on your fridge. <laughs> you hang this paper, paper towel in your fridge. <laughs> and so what we like to do then is I just took the pile, and you can cut a whole bunch, and I just cut them into leaf shapes. And I hung these on the bulletin board, but you could also mount them on brown cardstock or um, just a piece of construction paper and just write fall leaf on it. And so you they just stick them right up on your wall. And then the parents have a leaf to just yes, play on the leaf. fridge instead yeah. of a paper towel. Which but it's the, still the same process. So our goal was really that the students are practicing their tripod grasp and working on the process of this art. But then at the end, we're able to turn it into something that we can send home and it keeps everybody happy. I have an example that we don't have out too. Oh, what's that? This, this um, painting that you drip the painting, you fold oh. it up, and then you open the painting, and then you cut out a butterfly because of the symmetrical pattern. We did that in the spring and then yeah. in the winter. We've done it with mittens. Yeah, so if they yeah. like do like a drip painting and smush it all together. Then you open it up and then I would cut out the mittens at the end, but I would ask them, do you want the mittens? And they most of the time say, yeah, they love seeing, it. hey, they match, they match, this is so neat. So anything like that where the process is to figure out symmetry or drip painting or rolling, you know, if they've got rolling pins and then what are you left with? Just this piece of paper with paint on it. And so anytime you can change something into um, a fridge worthy product, then that's what we try to do. Not always, but a lot of times. So here's another example. This is one of our favorites. This is one of our favorites. I love to use canvases with our students because they paint a lot on paper or color and do a lot of things on paper. And Karen says she can't wait to get her paper towel. I'll put oh, we'll an extra make sure one extra. in the folder. Wait a minute, we've got about 50 How extras for you. How many do you, you want, Karen? <laughs> Everybody gets a paper towel. Oh, you, you, get a paper you get a paper towel. You get a paper towel. And so this is these are canvases. I was like, you're showing the wrong side. No, I'm just showing sure it was a canvas. Sorry. So Carry on. So you <laughs> You try not to be silly. I know when I say that. Give me a little pep talk before each video. Don't be silly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so this is like a canvas, and they actually sell them at our craft store here um, in town. And like a pile of eight or ten, and they're called economy. Um, canvases so they're cheap and then I always use my 40% off coupon at the craft store and so I get this pile of canvases and what we like to do is pre-program it with the child's name so I use my masking tape and I put the first letter Gemma calls it sticky tape which okay in England my people watching from England do you call tape sticky tape or is that just me I, I was like so my what question kind of is always what do you want to use and she's like what do you mean I said what well, do you want to use sticky tape and she's like all tape is sticky why wouldn't you use sticky tape I don't know why it's always I've always called it sticky tape I don't know why please someone what's the England, opposite of sticky help? tape ribbon <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just want to use back sticky up tape here. please back up not plain tape <laughs> anyway, and, tape. and I program the canvases with the first letter of their name and then we put out paints and they just paint all over the canvas and we can set you can set it up like on a little easel or have them paint flat and they can make any designs that they want and paint all over it and then when it's tacky not all the way dry not all the way drippy wet then we peel the tape the tape off and it makes like a name sign with their first letter of their name. So this is a really good one. Parents really like to keep anything that's on a canvas. They can hang it on their wall or their bedroom door or something like that. And then the last one that we wanted to show you is just an easy way to change up your coloring center. So if you have students who like to color a lot, which we do, um, do that one like that. fun way that we like to change that up and make it a little bit more process or sensory is we clip the papers. We might have to take it off. Oh, you can flip it around. We clip the it's papers to one of these like plastic it's mesh. I've used a bulldog clip, a clip. Find a clip. Find yeah. a clip. It's like a mesh and of it's hard plastic. Plastic, and we use this for a lot. We use it for sewing. We use it for lacing, um, for uh, weaving or threading. But can you see that? I it comes in different sizes as well. I think. I've seen it. Small. I always get this, and you can cut it in half if yeah. you want. But then instead of just coloring on a plain table, you can clip the paper to this canvas. And then when they color on it, I wonder if you can see that up close. It makes like a bumpy, can look. a bumpy, bumpy picture. Bumpy? So here's another right example. Up. So this is like um, bumpy art. And it's just another fun way for them to color. Um, and it comes out with a little bit of texture on it. And they get that sensory experience of the crayon bumping around and on the paper. They can hear it because it makes a different sound than if they're coloring on the paper, on the table. 
If you have students who are maybe reluctant to color, try it on there because they'll like to just do it just for the sensory experience of it and it gets them in the habit too of practicing holding the crayon and coloring. So those That's it, son. are some of the ways that we like to encourage students to participate in the process of doing art and uh, work on fine motor and be creative and we're still able to transform their pile of paintings or paper towels into something that is fridge worthy for the parents. These are for you, Karen. Here's, <laughs> Karen, we got a stack of paper towels for you. <laughs> That's what we have for you this afternoon. We are gonna be back tomorrow, we're gonna sing. I am not. We are. I'm not going to sing. Jamie's going to sing. I will be the, I'm gonna be the camera person. Nope, it's Gemma's turn. Well, the debate is still out about this, but I'm gonna turn the mic off. <laughs> The no. mic will not be attached. I'm kidding, we're not going to sing. You should still come back tomorrow. We are going to talk. <laughs> hey, we're good singers. They the kids tell us we are. There are three. I know, that's why I love them. <laughs> we are going to talk about some of the songs that we use specifically for transition time. So I'm going to share with you three songs that we use um, to get kids to come to the carpet, to get them to sit down for circle time, and then what we use at the end of the day is that transition for them to go home. It's not even a made up song. These are three actual real songs. And we also I might add have made our them up. own ones in. We do add our own ones in anyway. Well, they're not made we'll up like our other too. songs. But we're going to talk, share with you some transition songs that you can use That's to help. That's a tricky time of day is transition. Transitions are tricky, so I promise we won't really sing. Yes, you but will. But I'm going to unplug my totally, microphone. She'll totally sing. <laughs> Have a wonderful afternoon playing and learning with your kids today. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody.